My name is Professor Rackenstein, and I'd like to talk to you about something very important, especially if you live in underdeveloped Euro Eastern European countries. Today, we will discuss diphtheria, a serious bacterial infection usually affecting the mucous membranes of the nose and the throat. Diphtheria is a Greek term that translates pair of leather scrolls. It is caused by corny bacterium diphtheria, a facultative anaerogram positive bacterium. The cells are rod shaped. Here's an example under the microscope. Diphtheria is transmitted through airborne droplets. <laughs> Sorry, man. And also through contaminated personal items. <sighs> Refreshing. The symptoms of diphtheria include a bluish skin, a bloody, watery drainage from the nose, Ooh. breathing problems. Chills, croup like cough, and hoarseness. Signs your physician can see include gram stain or throat culture, EKG, gray black pseudo membrane, enlarged lymph glands, and swelling in the neck and larynx. There are several treatments for the disease. An antitoxin is given by shot or IV. Antibiotics include penicillin or erythromycin. The individual that is infected will also receive IV fluids and oxygen. They should be on bed rest with a heart monitor and in some cases a breathing tube, just in case. Anyone who comes in contact with an infected person should be should receive an immunization or booster shot. The prognosis depends on the severity. Some people have no symptoms. In other, the, the disease can progress slowly. The death rate is 10%. Let's talk about a little of the history of diphtheria. Diphtheria was once known as Klebs Laufer Bacillus, named after the two men that first described the disease in 1834. It was in 1888 when Pierre Paul Emile Roux discovered the toxin produced by C. diphtheria was the causative agent, thus giving us the name diphtheria. And Pierre Paul Emile Roux, uh, quite a long name, don't you think? Confusing. Here is a photo of the confusing named man chilling in the lab. Emil von Bering was one of the first pioneers in the race to fight the disease. Through his experiments with animals like rats, guinea pigs, and horses, he eventually developed an anti serum. In 1892, it was ready for commercial production. A commercial? Why well, don't they don't show it these days? In 1891, Bering was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his work. Here's a picture of the stuffy old chap. Finally, in 1923, a vaccine was produced by Alexander Graham. Barbara Hopkins, and Gaston Ramon. Here's a picture of the two. We don't have a picture of Hopkins. Sorry. One of the more well-known outbreaks was commemorated in the animated film Baldo. It's the story of a dog sled team led by Baldo, a Siberian husky that delivered 
the exact scene from Minana to Nome, Alaska. They saved hundreds of lives by traveling for more than 700 miles and 40 below temperatures and blizzard-like winds. They almost killed themselves. The statue of Balto still stands in Central Park, New York City. Outbreaks were common in the 18th and 19th century, but an introduction of the vaccine caused a decline in the number of cases. Due to the vaccine. Stop it! Your finger was in the way. Due to vaccination, diphtheria is rare in the U.S. only. 41 cases were reported between 1980 and 1995. Large epidemics have occurred in the last few years in the former. Soviet republics, this is due to failing in front. Girl, what is that? Infrastructures. Thank you. Infrastructures and lack of vaccine. That, that's how you hold a card. This is Nanana, and this is no. Dude, those dogs must have muscles. Like, literally, like, I can't even count those miles. Like I previously said, rolling plans and This is a pseudo-membrane in a child's nostril. Looks like a booger to me. Here are some screwed up tonsils. Thanks to that diphtheria nasty disease. Enough of all this stuffy bacteria stuff. Time to get real! Woo!